so now that we've talked about these settings inside of Handbrake, let's switch and go over and talk about uh, some of the other applications. So as you'll recall, if we go back to our slide where we talked about this, on the Mac, not only does Handbrake use uh, the X264 settings, but the newest versions of Episode Pro have also actually uh, put it in place. So why don't we switch over and look at some of the episode settings that are now available. Just like before, if you've used Episode Pro in some of the past webinars that I've done, I've actually talked about an uh, episode in, in some detail. You know, in terms of what, what we're looking at and what we're dealing with here, uh, it's a great setup because we've got a place to edit and deal with workflows that we're working with, the places, the sources where uh, that content's coming from, the actual settings that we're using or the encoders, and then where we're taking it to or the deployments. Now let's jump right into the X264 settings so that we can see how that jumps. Now of course it doesn't just do X264, it's actually got this en entire giant list of settings that we're looking at. So it's kind of easy to get lost in the shuffle, but under user and settings I've already got an X264 that's marked. So if I tab on it, if I click on it, over on the right hand side of my interface, I quickly see the settings as they've come up. So if you'll recall from other times I've talked about this, we've got the video codec. The container right now is, is an MOV, which can actually be changed to anything else that's friendly with the MPEG-4 format. We've got the video codec and we've got the audio codec. If I click on the video codec, this is where I get to those settings that are very similar to Handbrake. So you can see that it's a different layout but I've got the same type of material and same type of information that's available. I've got the ability to quickly jump to a preset, which is going to help control uh, how much time is spent trying to do the encode, things like keyframes, etc. But under the both the profile and quality settings, and then particularly under the advanced settings, I've now got access to all of those advanced features that I was excited about in Handbrake. So for example, I've got things like my motion estimation. Again, normally set to, uh, by default, hexagon. As you can see, I've already updated this setting to use the, the Yuma or the uneven multi-hex setting. We've got the ability to adjust our motion estimation range here as well. We can also adjust the MV or the motion vector range. And we've got a number of other settings, including the ability to turn on something like Blu-ray compatibility. So as you can see, I've got all those great advanced features, but I've got it in a way that I can tie it directly into my watch folders and my workflows that I'm using to publish all my content into multiple places. So what I've done is I've taken this X264 setting now and I've applied it into a workflow that allows me to have an input folder. Anything that goes into that input folder is automatically encoded using my X264 settings. It's automatically then saved to my output folder, but at the same time, it's also automatically uploaded to YouTube using the YouTube deployment setting already built into episode. 